Hey guys, it's Akuna Citrimer again and welcome back to my channel. So today I'm going to continue the videos on hand tracking with Oculus Quest. In the previous video I showed you how we could actually draw with our hands by detecting a pinch gesture. So in this video what I'm going to do is I actually want to change the color of the brush by selecting different colors in the scene. So we're also going to be looking at how we can use what's called hand physics, how we can add colliders, and then how those colliders interact with the selection of the colors. So let's jump into Unity and I start looking at it. All right guys, so let me show you the demos that I created by pushing this to my device. So I'm just gonna show you demo one. So if we pull demo one, you can see that I have, a, it's kind of like a booth and with different colors, I can touch the red color, I can touch the green color. I also added a debug window because there's a lot of things going on that are not really easy to see in the, because I'm not debugging in Unity, it just makes it really hard. I'm just, you know, doing different gestures, changing the color, so I selected a blue. In this case, I selected a black, and I'm just, you know, drawing, drawing a line. And you have to be careful when you're drawing and, and calculating, uh, detecting a pinch, because it's, it's not very accurate, it's not 100% accurate, but it works really, really well, and I think with this version of the Oculus integration. I'm, I'm pretty happy with the results. So here I'm selecting a green and then I'm going back to, you know, going going back to a blue. And because I started a new line, I think I have an issue that I need to fix. And I'm selecting blue and then, yeah, I'm just going back and forth. And I can also do it with my left hand, just, you know, just like I do it with the right. And they're completely independent. So that's one of the things I want to show you how I accomplish it. This case I'm going to draw, you know, with my both hands at the same time, just show you that that also works. And I just, you know, just Google, just playing around with, with what I'm doing right now, just having a lot of fun. So I'm just gonna fast forward it and then show you, so here I'm just drawing a house and, you know, the side of a house and then so on. So let me go ahead and go into demo two and then we'll jump into Unity and look at some of, some of the changes. So here I'm just looking around and looking at the sun and, and you know, just, and I draw something by mistake, just pointing that out and selecting different colors. I think I show you most of that. What I want to show you in this video is I, let me go ahead and go into where I try to, so I'm going to try to draw a sun. So I select the yellow color and, you know, just draw in. And this is just to show you that I have to fix an issue with the, with the sun. As I draw a new line, it's just not remembering the, the color that I selected for some reason. And yeah, this is, this is a really bad, this is a really bad sun. And so just, you know, look good or not. <laughs> so I think that was, that was pretty fun. And then here I just, you know, I'm going to try to attempt it to do it again. Just, you know, and, and do it one more time. Anyways, too much fun of that. Let's go ahead and jump back into, let's go back into Unity and show you the scene. So this scene right here, it's going to come out with my VR Draw GitHub repository. So. The repository you can download it from github.com and then Dilmer V. I'm only gonna make this available to patrons today, but I'm gonna make it available in a couple of days for to everyone. So but if you want to download the previous version of the project, you can always download it by going into you know my repo and then going into VR Draw. This one doesn't have the hand implementation, it has the controller implementation. So the hand implementation is gonna be available in Patreon, just like I said. And I, I think it's gonna be available in two to three days to everyone. So just, you know, if you don't wanna go into Patreon, that's okay. You can always, you know, wait two to three days and then you're also gonna get it and you can use it for anything that you like. So what I'm gonna start with is some of the 3D modeling and, and there's really not 3D modeling, they're just cubes, but some of the structure that I have in the hierarchy. So in the, in the previous video, I covered some of these, but I think I need to reiterate it. This is some of the components that came with the hand tools for the Oculus integration. So on this one, I have an interactable tools SDK driver. This one, I'm not really using it for, for much, but if you wanted to use it, you could use the ray tool, the fingertip, you know, poke tool. I'm not gonna cover that in this video, so just know that that is there if we need to use it in the future. For now, I think I'm just using collisions to detect which color I have selected. I also have a light, I have the ground, the, the important parts are going to be the colors, right? So this is a game object that has multiple colors. I have my base, I have my panel, and then the header, which I'm using Text Mesh Pro to do that. And also the, the subtitle, which is really important because that's the subtitle that I keep changing as I'm changing, as I'm touching each one of the colors. So the next piece are the colors. So how did I accomplish the color selection? 
and how do I change the color upon selection with my hands? So what I decided to do is I decided to, to create something simple, very basic, just to understand how the system works. So each one of these are a 3D model, and then each of them has a box collider. They also have a rigid body. I have gravity turned on, but I have kinematic turned on because I don't want these ones to fall into, well, in this case, they won't fall because there's this box collider beneath it. But if I didn't have that, then with kinematic, I can keep them in the air and it still handle physics. So box collider, rigid body, it's, you know, fairly straightforward. Then I have a component that I added, it's called the, and I'm going to show you that code, the VR hand draw color selector. This one has a subtitle as a reference. And the reason for that is because upon selection of this object, I want to be able to change that title and just know that I'm also using on the box collider, I'm using trigger collision. So just make sure that you know that. The other things that I'm also using is I'm using a unit event because the reason for that is because what's going to happen is as soon as I collide with each one of these, I want to send an event to the VR hand draw implementation. So in this case, I have a, I have a VR draw left hand for my left hand and I have one for the right hand. The reason why I split it into two is because, you know, I don't, I don't want to change the color of the line for both hands at the same time. I only want to change it. So if I'm touching it, if I'm touching this with my left hand, I want to set the line color to be white. If I'm touching red with my right hand, I want to set it to, you know, red to be the color that I'm drawing with my right hand. And then I'm just calling the VR hand draw update line color on, on either one of these. So that's how these ones are. They're, you know, they're very basic. If I wanted to add another one, it will be as simple as just copying this, pasting, adding a new material, and then just, you know, just changing. And, and just know that, make sure you use the game object name because that's the, that's the name that I'm using to display here. I didn't want to keep it, I want to keep it simple and then, you know, the, the more simple that we make it, the easier that it's going to be to learn it. And I always try to do that in everything that I do. So now that you know that, let's go ahead and look at some of the components that are actually doing the draw. So on the on the components I have, on, on the left hand anchor, I have an OVR hand prefab, prefab left, and I also have one on the right hand. So one for the left hand, one for the right hand, make sure that you change all the different hand types. Like, I, like I'm showing you right here. And this is just a prefab that comes with the Oculus integration. I just changed the name. So if I click on open and actually, yeah, it's just using the OVR hand prefab. You can also find it if you go into project and just do OVR hand prefab, you can find it there and you can drag it and drop it into your scene. And honestly, that's all it takes if you want to do hand tracking, just drag it in and drop it. And then all of a sudden you're gonna have hand tracking plus some other configuration that you can, you know, you can look at by watching my previous videos. All right, so now that we have that, now let's go ahead and look at the inspector. So these ones, I didn't change anything in here. The only thing that I changed was the hand type on any anywhere where I had the hand type in them. So just know that. And then the other thing that I'm using here is that is custom to my implementation is the VR draw left hand and also the VR draw right hand. Both of these have the same script associated. They just have a diff is for a different hand. So for instance, this one, the hand to track is tracking the left hand. This one is tracking the right hand. And then the object to track movement is basically reference to the object, the OVR hand prefab, right? In this case, because I'm using on the one that is for the right hand. So in the case for the left hand, this one is going to be tracking that object. And if I click on it, you can see that it's tracking that object. So that's that. Let's go ahead and look at some of the code because you might be wondering how I accomplished the demo and that's what I want to show you and that's what I think is the most important thing to look at today. So on the previous video I gave you a walkthrough of this code so I'm not going to go into the code so much because I already walked you through that so make sure you watch the previous video. It's going to be linked in the description of this video so make sure you watch it if you want to understand it. I'm just going to walk you through some of the changes that I made. So for instance how do I actually change the color? And, and that's the method that I'm going to show you here. It's the up, it's the update line color. I still have some issues with it that I need to fix. So as you saw, every time I was starting a new line, it was changing the color for a little bit and then it was going back. I still need to fix that. But just know that this is a public method. It's called update line color. I pass in the line, the color that I need to change. I'm logging. So this is another thing that I added. It's called the VR log info. And that's what I'm using to log to the debug log that I show you on the on the demo which is basically, if we go back into Unity, it's going to be this one here. And I'm also going to, you, you're going to be look at, you're going to be looking at that in the, you know, as soon as I check in the code. And then, so I'm just saying, you know, the color was updated and then I'm changing the color on the current line render. 
I'm also changing the default color to the color that I'm getting passed in. I'm also changing the emission color because I'm using emission colors on these materials because I want it to be brighter and not have a lot of shading. And then I'm also changing the default light material color with anything that gets passed in. So as far as like the VR hand draw, that's basically everything that changed. No, not a lot of it changed. The, there, was, there was one piece that I had to change to make it easier. And it was this method right here, which I'm going to, let me just go ahead and remove some of these comments. Some of these, yeah, I think just to make it cleaner. And I had some issues with the, the way that I was drawing the line and actually releasing of the lines of the, so if I was doing a pinch and then basically releasing that pinch, it wasn't working quite right. So what I ended up doing is I'm capturing the, you know, whether the, the user, the person is actually doing a pinch or not. So this is going to get a true or false. And I was doing that before. It's just going to be changing, changing some of the logic. And then I'm also using index finger pinch string. So the way that this works right here is I'm also getting the finger confidence. And the only time when I'm going to go through here and actually draw is if the finger confidence is high. So I could get a low confidence or I could get a light, uh, a high confidence. And if you look at this, this is an enum and it has a low and a high. I decided to use a high because I wanted the draw experience to be as accurate as it could be. If it's not high, I'm going to return it and, and I'm not going to draw anything. So it needs to be high in order for me to draw anything. The other thing that I also did is I added a is pinch release property, which is a Boolean. So what I'm doing here is I'm saying, okay, if the, if the person is pinching and the string is beyond the minimum that I require as an inspector option, I update the line. Otherwise, I set it. So if I update the line, if I'm within that threshold, I set the is pinching release to true, meaning that as soon as I, you know, as soon as I get to this line, I'm going to be, you know, I'm go I know that I that I finished the pinch. Otherwise, I'm going to return. And then if I if I really release the pinch, I'm going to create a new line render. And then what's going to happen is if I get through here, I'm going to set it to false. And then we're going to go through that cycle one more time. So I'm still working with some of this logic just to make sure that it works well, but just know that what this is doing is just creating a, a new line render. As soon as I let go of the pinch, if I let go of the pinch, then I know that I need to create a new line render. Otherwise, I know that I need to update. So let me show you some of the, the color selection implementation. So this one is actually two classes in one. Just the first class is just very basic. It's, uh, it's, a inherit, it's inheriting from Unity event color because I need to send, I, I need to send that as a parameter. And if you're creating a Unity event, you have to inherit from Unity event and passing a type, which in this case is going to be color. Otherwise, you won't be able to send that, that as an argument. So that's what I did this. And then I have the selected text, which I show you. That's the text that I'm changing upon, cha upon changing the color that I have selected. And then I have two different Unity events. I have one for the left hand and I have one for the right hand. I also have a reference to the material because I need to get the material for this game object. So that's the first thing that I do is I, on the awake method, I get the material. I have a debug log, which I don't need anymore. I was troubleshooting some of these. So I can just remove that. And in fact, I can just go here and just go to a one-liner. Perfect. And then this is just a property that I thought I was going to use and I don't think I'm using anymore. So we, we can just get rid of it. Let's just keep it clean since you're going to be using this and I want it to, I want it to be as clean as it can be. And then the method that I'm using to, to determine if something has been selected is the untrigger method. I show you that the box collider was set to trigger. So that's why I'm capturing this method. I pass in the collider other. So this is very, very basic unity, you know, unity features. And then I'm just changing the, you know, the color that gets the color that gets displayed on the selected text to be the name of the object. So I'm just saying color selected. If the object name is green, this is going to be color selected column green. If it's black, it's going to be color selected column black. I'm also, it's, this is going through a lot of parents and that's because of how I am using, I'm using the physics system on the hands. And that's the last thing that I'm going to show you. So the hand component is actually the parent of the parent of the parent. And I'm going to show you why that is, but just know that that's going to give us the hand transform. And I had to do a lot of debugging in order to get that information, to be honest, and then look at some of the scripts. But the, the next thing that I do is I also just display the, the name of the transform because I wanted to make sure that that was going to be the component that actually has the hand components. And in that component, it's going to be this. So if I go here, it's going to be this prefab that has all the different settings 
So if I go here, let's just go ahead and wait until this compiles. Okay, so if I go into this component, go into the inspector, it's going to be this component here. The reason why I have to do pairing, the pairing, the pairing is because I'm using hand physics. And if I look at this component right here at the very end, you're gonna see that I have hand physics associated. So what's gonna happen? Hand physics is going to be adding a bunch of capsules and the capsules are generated by enabling physics capsules on the OVR skeleton script. So by doing this, I have capsules that are colliders. So those colliders ca cause collisions, of course, and that's how the untrigger event gets triggered. Then because I have box collisions on these ones, I have the box colliders in here with the rigid body. That's how I can actually generate those collisions and therefore get into this method and then change the color. So one of the things that I'm doing here is I'm saying, okay, I want to make sure that, that I did get the, the hand transform. So if that's not null and the hand transform that I'm getting is for the left hand, then I know that I need to execute the method that is bound to the on color left hand selected object. So that's what I'm calling the invoke with the material color that I have as these as, the, as this game object. And then I'm doing the exact same thing with the right hand. So just keep in mind that if if you need to handle collections, make sure that you're adding the component that I show you, which is hand physics. And then the other the other part that is also important is the enable physics capsules. So I'm going to show you briefly how that looks like. So if we scroll down here and we search for capsules, you're going to see that enable physics capsules gets added and I'm adding a game object. I'm also setting this transform to be a pair, basically this game object to be a to have the pairing as this transform. So that's one of the pairings that I show you that I was getting from the on trigger. Then the other things that are happening here is if enable physics capsule is set to on, it's also generating, you know, different game objects, also adding rigid bodies to those game objects. And then that's why I'm, I have to go to parent, 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 because there's a lot of parent and child relationships that gets added when you enable physics. So that's honestly everything that I wanted to show you today, guys. If you guys have any questions, please let me know. All right, guys, thank you much for watching this video today. I really appreciate your time. And if you have any questions about anything that I just mentioned on Oculus Quest development, please let me know in the comments. Also, be sure to check out gamedev.net because they have great resources for game developers. And also find me in patreon.com where I'm basically posting what I'm doing behind the scenes and also early access source code. Thank you very much, guys.